Hello everyone and welcome back to the Optimize Your Marketing Funnel event hosted by Mention. We're back with SimilarWeb uh, this afternoon or morning, wherever you are based in the world. Uh, feel free to let us know in the chat where you're based and what companies you all work at uh, and just generally say hello. Um, SimilarWeb will be presenting the marketing strategy teardown to conquer your competitors. So this is going to be uh, an excellent session. I'm sure you'll all love it and get loads of value and um, have lots of information to, to build your marketing strategies um, forthcoming. So please feel free to ask any questions in the chat or in the questions tab down below. Uh, we'll have some time at the end dedicated to answering your questions. And uh, indeed, I see the first question, will this be recorded? Yes, it will. You'll have the recordings available uh, approximately 15, 20 minutes after the session is finished, and that will be directly in your inbox, as well as some extra resources, including the slide deck uh, that we will send via email once the event is over. So without further ado, I'm passing the mic over to Chloe and Owen, and they will be hosting the session today. Thank Excellent. You. Thank you. Thank you, Francesca. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining our session today. Um, as Fran mentioned, it's going to be jam packed, a lot of data, a lot of insights, but um, we are recording it. So um, don't worry, you can, um, you know, sit back and relax. And um, like Fran mentioned, please do answer, um, send in your questions. We're here to really help and um, we'd love to hear um, any questions that you might have throughout the session. Um, just as a quick introduction, my name is Chloe Nichols and I'm a product marketing manager here at SimilarWeb for the Digital Research Intelligence Solution. And I'm joined here by Owen. So over to you for a quick introduction. Yes, thanks, Chloe. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Owen Badham, also a product marketer here at SimilarWeb. And I work on all things around our, our digital marketing intelligence solution. And uh, thanks thanks for, for uh, having me here today. It's great. It's great to be here speaking to everyone. Good stuff. So um, in a quick overview of what you're going to learn today, um, we'll cover why competitive intelligence is so critical for your business growth. Owen's going to take you through some key steps on growing your website traffic and launching impactful marketing campaigns. And then we're going to go through a real life example using Gymshark and um, versus Lulu Lemon. So just to show you how you can use those similar web insights to your advantage. And um, like we said at the top, we're going to save lots of time at the end. Um, so send through your questions. Um, and we're also going to be running a couple of snap polls through the session. So it'd be great if you can engage when these are promoted um, and pop up on the screen. Um, we'd love to get a bit of audience interaction going. So many of you must be familiar with the MarTech 5000 and how Scott Brinkler has been tracking the landscape over the years. Um, it's now close to 8,000 companies. So I think it's a perfect example of a saturated market. And when you're a brand in a specific category, like one of these, um, it means that there are a lot of competing players in the same space as your company. And it's really important to not only understand your competitive landscape, but also how are they perceived in the market? So um, understanding how they are um, positioned relative to your own company, but really the big um, challenge here is how do you stand out in that crowded market? So to do this, there are several ways that you can keep tabs on your competitors. For example, you can do desk research and use tools like Aula to gather information about your competitors. You can subscribe to Google News Alerts to stay up to speed on launches, market expansion and leadership changes. Or you can use social listening tools like Mention to monitor those key trends and brand mentions online. Plus, you can review um, sites like G2 and Trustpilot to gather that consumer feedback on competing brands. Um, and finally, last but definitely not least, um, you can use a tool like SimilarWeb for that granular traffic and engagement data on key rivals for competitive and market intelligence. Um, OK, so this is the first poll that we're going to run. Um, so you should be able to see it on screen now. We just love to hear um, which of these techniques are you using um, to um, currently track your competitors with your competitive research? 
Um, so just go in there now and submit your vote. We're very, really curious to learn um, a little bit more about how you're tracking your competitive landscape. All right, there seems to have been a bit of a pause now in the answers. So uh, yeah, so in second place, we have company analysis desk research. Around 21% of you are using this. Uh, another 21% of you are using social listening tools. Uh, well, Mention is a great example of that, as we mentioned on the slide. Uh, competitor and market intelligence, that's around 18% of you. And 16% are using product and customer review sites. So Back quite to you. spread, actually, isn't it? Very much yeah. so. Yeah. So yeah, we've got a mixed bag up in these results. Um, there wasn't a big majority for any one of those tools, a slight majority for news stories and, and media coverage alerts. But uh, yeah, very interesting results. But I'll, I'll hand it back to you now, Clary, to yeah. continue. Excellent. Thank you very much. Um, so if I continue, um, Basically, when you have those tactics that you've been using um, and when you have them in place, I guess the thing is that there's a lot of intense competitive pressure and external factors that are really beyond your control. Um, and your biggest rivals really continue to grow their audience or increase market share, which feels like um, as a marketing manager, nothing you can do seems to make a difference. So you become so focused on your competition with a fixed mindset that the only way you think you can succeed is by quite literally beating your competition. Um, but there is a secret to staying competitive and it's having that growth mindset and using a data-driven approach to stay one step ahead. So you might be familiar with Simon Sinek's talk on playing the infinite game. Um, if you haven't watched it, I highly recommend that you do. Um, it's an excellent framework when you're thinking about how to leverage competitive intelligence. So the finite game is where there are winners and losers, but in reality, you're playing a game that has no end. And for it to play um, ongoing, you need to be able to outperform, outsmart, and outplay your competition. And it's part of an ongoing process. It's always part of this continuous game of cat and mouse with your competitors. So they launch a promotion one week, and then you launch yours the next. And what you're really competing for is the attention of your audience. So um, when you're in this game with no end, um, you really need to be able to react quickly um, to competitive movements and know what they're doing um, to get really ahead of um, their own um, campaign strategy. So the good news is that there is an easy way to do this. And in the, net, in the age of digital intelligence, um, you can get started straight away for free using SimilarWeb. So if you go to the SimilarWeb page right now, um, you can see that there is a link there. Um, you can search for any company to uncover their traffic and engagement data, audience breakdown, and an overview of their top marketing channels. So um, don't stay there for too long, stay with us today, but um, it is something, it's a tool that you can use um, right away um, whenever you need to get those really high level traffic and engagement insights. Um, but there is the, there is, um, you know, the free product, um, but it's actually only really scratching the surface. Uh, similar web really helps business leaders and marketing managers like yourselves to really get under the hood of the digital world and help them understand market trends, seize competitive opportunities and uncover audience insights so that they can make better and faster strategic decisions. Plus, we have the best in all in one toolkit to really help you optimize your entire digital marketing channel mix. So from SEO, PPC to display and affiliate marketing. It provides you those x-ray specs that you need to keep an eye on competitive tactics and providing you with that first mover advantage. So you can really unleash impactful marketing campaigns that deliver maximum ROI. So I'll actually hand it over to Owen now and he's going to use um, some, uh, basically a, a framework that we use with our customers um, about gathering competitive intelligence to make those better and faster decisions. Yes, thanks, Chloe. Uh, that's right. If, if we go to the next slide, we'll actually see the main steps that we encourage SimilarWeb users to take 
when building out the plan for an effective marketing strategy. And so typically our customers first step is to get the lay of the land in the business environment in which they operate. Uh, this provides a, a greater understanding of, of their industry and some of the macro trends going on at that level, also helping them identify those market leaders. Uh, next, they'll drill down into those leading competitors, comparing them side by side on traffic and engagement, which really gives a glance at who's winning and losing and engaging their audiences. Now, speaking of audiences, they will also want to uncover other audience insights like their cross-browsing behavior, which can hopefully reveal just how loyal an audience segment is versus their closest competitors. Finally, they will continuously track and compare themselves against a set of industry competitors. So they stay alerted to any significant shifts or trends so they can respond should they need to. So let's go through each of these steps one by one. Now, the first step is looking to uncover some of your competitors' weaknesses. Here, we're looking at leading publishing companies in the United States, like the New York Times, CNN, Fox News, BuzzFeed, and so on. Uh, and by doing a quick SWOT analysis, we can compare each player's performance across engagement metrics, such as unique visitors versus bounce rate, or visit duration versus page visits, which gives us a great view on who is performing better across these metrics. That quick snapshot of the market leaders really allows you to easily understand where your company's position is within your overall industry landscape. The next step is benchmarking your company against your direct competitors with a top line overview of the traffic and engagement for your own website's performance you can immediately see where your website is doing better or worse than your competitor now you can also analyze year on year growth to see if your rivals are growing faster or slower than your site which will hopefully inform whether you need to target any improvements on specific traffic and engagement metrics, as well as providing guidance to your wider marketing strategy overall. Traffic metrics are obviously a great bellwether for benchmarking your performance, but understanding your audience relative to your competition is also crucial. You will want to know the basics, like how much time they are spending on your website versus your competitors, but you'll also want to see things like the audience overlap between yours and your competitors' websites, as well as calculating the total addressable market available within your competitive set. This is really handy for quantifying any untapped potential audience you should also be targeting. Finally, you should continually track your competitive landscape to stay on top of any major movements in industry traffic and engagement, or specifically across your major competitors' channel activity. You can use these insights to monitor whether your competitors are improving or declining in specific areas, or maybe they're making a move on any of your stronger channels. And you can even go into specific tactical trends that are occurring amongst those rivals as well. Now, we'll dive into a working example of a full teardown using two players in the athleisure apparel market. And our main protagonists, as we mentioned earlier, are going to be Gymshark and Lululemon. We're gonna go from that macro industry view, taking in insights on the broader marketplace that can help us shape and guide our overall strategy all the way through to the ins and outs of specific channel tactics taking place with these two brands. We hope this teardown highlights just how you can use competitive intelligence to shape up your own campaign ideas uh, that also help to drive efficient growth for you. Yeah, that's right, Owen. Um, one of the biggest mistakes I've seen marketing managers make before they go headfirst into launching their next marketing campaign is they don't take a step back and make sure that they understand what's happening in their market first to get that macro view. 
Um, so how their brand is positioned against other competitors. Um, what are those industry benchmarks that they can use to measure their success? Because um, in reality, um, you need to play harder in your market so that you can maximize your business growth. Um, and some of the ways you can do this is actually by defining your market. So who are those leaders, partners, or potential threats that aren't on your radar? So um, using this approach, um, this is what we'll do in the first part of the marketing teardown. So one of the first steps is um, looking at analyzing the market to see how big it is and what are some of those key seasonal trends uh, that is impacting your market. Here we can see a snapshot of the athletic wear market and I've actually built a custom market within the platform. So um, this is what I've pulled together as the key market leaders. So it's a snapshot that represents about 10 to 20 players. Here you can see that the market has generated over 2.3 billion visits in the last couple of years in the United States and around 10 million unique visitors, which gives you an indication of the number of people that visit these websites. So starting here really helps you contextualize the market trends and understand how it's changing over time. But when you compare the engagement metrics between the major players, it's Lulu Lemon that actually comes out on top with the lowest bounce rate compared to the market average of about 43%. Um, and its site um, duration is around five minutes, which is much longer than the other players. So, um, Owen, what do you think about this? Yeah, I mean, it's super interesting to me. If I was a marketer at Gymshark, uh, Lulu must have really engaged visitors because that bounce rate is so low. They must have really successful landing pages with great copy and messaging. It's obviously keeping people on site for longer, as well as driving them to other pages on the site as well. Yeah, really good um, insight. And um, I think having that view of your competition means you can quickly spot your key rivals, strengths and weaknesses, um, and essentially just really see how your digital performance compares. Um, but having a strong on-site engagement isn't the only factor. Having a loyal audience is also a really important metric that you should be measuring um, and comparing against your competition um, and other market leaders. So. If you have a strong loyal audience, it really indicates strong brand recognition and then they ret retain their website visitors, likely to spend more time and most likely they're potentially converting more on that website by having a higher audience loyalty score. So here you can see Fabolytics actually has the highest exclusive audience with 66% of their website visitors um, only visiting their website um, over the last couple of years. So this is compared to Nike, which is just behind at around 63%. And then Lulu is at 55% and Gymshark has a 41% loyalty score. And looking at demographics across the industry, you can see that about 57% of the audience is female versus the males, which is 43%. Um, and looking at the age distribution, the majority capture around 29% of the 25 to 34 year old bracket. And you, even though you can see that Nike is the leader for the traffic share at around 48%, looking at Gymshark, the data shows that they attract a much younger audience around 35% um, are actually 18 to 24 year olds. So that suggests that they're more of a Gen Z brand compared to the other players. Um, and this might be part of their wider strategy. When we look at those high level traffic and engagement metrics of both Lululemon and Gymshark, we can see that Lulu is smashing it on the main engagement metrics across both desktop and mobile web combined. And when we compare to their app metrics, Lululemon is still outperforming on most engagement metrics, but Gymshark actually attracts a larger monthly active users, which will be really interesting to see how this plays out in the head-to-head -head teardown that Owen's going to walk through you later in the session. Having this unified view of both desktop, mobile app, and app traffic to compare strategies means you can get a holistic understanding of where key rivals are stronger or weaker across devices, and essentially just really where you can focus your efforts. 
And one of the final steps in your marketing strategy teardown is looking at the overall marketing channel mix. So here you can see that the industry leaders get most of their traffic via direct channel. So that's around 42%. And then the next leading channel is 29% for um, looking at their organic search. So um, based on this channel marketing mix that we see here, Owen, um, I'm really curious to hear how you would act, take action from this insights um, if you were the Gymshark marketing manager. Yeah, well, I mean, this is a, a great overview of the market. It, it gives me an umbrella uh, viewpoint of, of how I might want to prioritize my marketing campaigns, knowing the channels where the main competitors, as well as the leading industry players, have very high traffic activity. Ha having this insight before I plan my channel tactics is invaluable. Um, it helps me justify many decisions like allocating marketing budget towards paid search. Uh, perhaps I might want to build a stronger affiliate program, um, or perhaps I want to double down on my SEO activities. Um, so it's actually at this point, um, we'd like to do another poll uh, and get a consensus from everyone on the call about the primary channels you guys are using to drive traffic. Perhaps we'll uncover a collective vibe on which channel is the most successful. So. Let's see what you all say. All right. Um, so I think we can present the results now. So our top channel for awareness is actually organic social. 23% uh, of you have said that this is your go-to channel. Uh, second place, we have SEO, a uh, very strong choice, 19% of you. In third place, 17%, it's events. Um, very strong, I would agree. This is what we're doing right now. Uh, paid search and AdWords in fourth place with 10% uh, in actually joint fourth with paid social. Uh, referral aff affiliate is in fifth place with 8%. Uh, and last place, we have display ads of 6% of you. Really interesting. Uh, it, it, do you know what that actually reflects what research we've done quite closely um so not 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 too surprised by some of the results there um, interesting that organic social is 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 up there um i think that that's that's really interesting that that's the leading one um but yeah thank you everyone for participating much appreciated okay so going back to the presentation let me just get rid of this um yeah, so now we're going to start actually narrowing the analysis from that industry view to that of just our specific competitors, allowing us to understand actual channel tactics that are in play. So, as we mentioned, Gymshark has a much closer affinity with brands like Lululemon and Fabletics. So it makes sense for us to track their channel activity more closely in this narrow view, rather than tracking the tactics of those bigger players like Nike or Adidas, for example. Um, with the marketing channels tool, we can easily understand which of those acquisition channels are driving the most traffic for Gymshark versus Lululemon. And not just that, but we can also check that traffic split across mobile and desktop devices. In fact, the aggregated snapshot view that we can see here actually allows us to work out which of Lululemon's channels are most heavily optimized for mobile. Um, and as with the insights Chloe showed us on engagement metrics, here we can see that Lulu is doing a great job across all channels in terms of mobile optimization. So there should be plenty for us to dive into and take some inspiration from. So um, using the keyword analysis tools that we've got available with SimilarWeb, we can see that across mobile, Lulu is optimized for some pretty specific products. We can see here we've got ones like ABC pants, yoga mats, uh, but actually I know uh, as a marketer at Gymshark that these aren't products that we actually sell. Uh, but in this list, we can see that there are many, many other product-based non-branded keywords, which we both really compete on quite well. So there's keywords here like backpack, joggers, sports bra, 
all of which have a relatively high search volume. There's more of a competitive traffic split across them, and they all actually have low keyword difficulty, which is which is quite interesting. Um, if we're looking to research which of our product ranges to optimize organically for, and that we already compete organically against those non-branded keywords, this is a really neat way to start that research process. Now let's make a call on which of these we should actually try and optimize for. So we're gonna go with sports bra. So we're gonna need some more info on the keyword as a viable opportunity before we start targeting it. So for this, we can use the mobile traffic tool. And here we can actually see that neither Gymshark nor Lululemon are the market's MVP, so to speak, for this search term across mobile. That would actually be retail giants like Amazon and Target. And there's a good, and this is a really good example of that macro industry insight again, but actually this time it's just happening at a keyword level. We also see here that sports bra as a keyword generates on average 31,000 searches uh, and 48,000 mobile, 48, 4,800 mobile visits a month. Uh, with well over half of those visits coming from organic searches. And these figures actually climb over the summer months of July and August as well. We also see that it has an average estimated CPC of about $2.5 uh, per click. Really interesting, should we want to consider budgeting for a, a paid search campaign around this keyword too? So what can Gymshark do here? Do we think they should run an integrated mobile search campaign on their sports bra range over the summertime, perhaps? Well, hold your horses. Even though it's got a high search volume, there's also a very high zero click percentage of about 77%. So what that means is many searches for sports bra don't even result in an actual click. So perhaps it's not as strong an option that we we want to go for this keyword and build a campaign around it as we first thought. Of course, organic is only half the contest with much of these things. We also need to see how Lululemon's paid search traffic is performing as well and how much budget they've actually spent to get that paid search traffic to. Using the paid search overview and paid landing pages tool, we can see that Lulu's pumping budget into its paid search campaigns with an estimated $7.4 million spend over the past 12 months. Now that spend peaks around November with Black Friday and the holiday period with a whopping $1 million spend in that month alone. So we can safely say that Lulu's, aiming, uh, Lulu's investments are uh, being aimed at these campaigns and winning visitors at the very least, um, because we can see the paid search traffic increasing massively around these peaks too. In fact, it's 1.2 million paid search visits in November alone. This tool is really useful because it's also allowing us to track other markets too. So here we switch the view, we can see that Gymshark's home UK market, they are much more um, dominant across the paid search channel than, than Lulu, um, who we can see are spending very little to actually capture a share of the market here. So really good for just switching and checking what um, tactics are happening around pay search in another market that, that you might be operating or wanting to operate in as well. So let's get a feel for the Black Friday campaigns that Lulu invested its paid search budget in so we can see what was driving the 1.2 million traffic spike that we saw. So it turns out Lulu spends a lot on getting visitors to its online storefront with a whopping $604,000 spend in that single month, just getting people to its homepage. We can also see that the keywords it's bidding on too, and no surprises, it's covering all the bases with its branded keywords, as well as misspellings of Lululemon high up on that list too. And it's actually running 684 search ads, driving users to this landing page. Now, that's a lot. So what does this tell me as a paid search manager at Gymshark? It's telling me exactly where Lulu wanted people to land during this campaign period. 
And you can bet it would have doubled down with messaging on its homepage, promoting special offers and the key ranges that it wanted to push at the time. We're going to shift slightly and we're going to look at the incoming traffic tool because this is showing us which referral sites send traffic to Lululemon as well. It also tells us the industries that the traffic is coming from and the competitive share of referral traffic at an overall level as well as by specific domain. And here we can see that Lulu has way more referral tra traffic than, than ourselves if we were Gymshark implying it has a pretty strong affiliate partner program. And if we scroll down to the list of domains, we can instantly get a quick glimpse of the traffic insights for any of those referring domains. And there appear to be a lot of voucher and coupon sites there. So this is obviously a key referral tactic for them where they wish to build partnerships. It must also work very well in the US, US market as well, as, as it seems to be driving a ton of channel growth. Now, for Gymshark, it's easy to get a rundown on any of these referral coupon sites by clicking on the quick analysis button that we can see here. Then we get a breakdown of the site's traffic and engagement insights, their channel traffic spread, top countries, and we can even see its top keywords that are driving organic traffic too. This makes it super easy for us to make the call on whether we should approach this site ourselves as a potential future referral or affiliate partner. Just as with paid search, Lulu invests heavily in its creative campaigns and its media buying strategy. And Gymshark can easily learn what's worked and been successful by deep diving into the creatives, campaigns, publishers, and the ad networks that Lulu has used over the past 12 months. And this is across both mobile and desktop devices too. At that point, Gymshark can then begin to think about building their own media buying strategy and creative campaigns, thinking about how many ads is optimal per campaign. What product ranges are they running campaigns on? How long should the ads run per campaign and what messaging and creative copy resonates the best over time, as well as which publishers and their ad networks have they used to target their preferred audiences. Wow, so that felt like a pretty comprehensive teardown right there. What do you think, Chloe? Yes, it sure did. Um, hopefully um, that was really useful in terms of an end to end teardown um, using similar web and um, what both myself and Owen did in terms of how you could apply um, your own um, brand and your own competitive teardown. Um, and it just gives you a bit of an idea of how you would use similar web to do it. So just to recap, um, we really looked into the why you need to use competitive intelligence to improve um, your strategy. So, you know, when you were playing that infinite game, um, you need to stay ahead by tracking um, your competition and really getting that market context to make sure you can justify your strategic um, decision making. Um, and then we also covered those best practice practices. So. Um, it's like regular monitoring of the industry leaders, analyzing their strengths and weaknesses um, and understanding the traffic and engagement data and relative to your own um, checking where your audience spends their time online and how loyal they are. Um, and of course, just ensuring that you're always keeping tabs um, as part of this continuous competitive tracking um, that you're doing at the moment. It's, it's just really important that um, you can adapt and change um, tact um, and you have the data to sort of back yourself up. Um, and lastly, we did that very long um, and in-depth, but hopefully, again, it was very useful for those that um, are watching today or during the replay of a um, competitive teardown and looking at that competitive activity at industry level and then using that as a guide for your strategy, particularly when you're going head to head with your direct competition. So it's going all the way through to those specific channel tactics and uh, measuring the impact of 
um, how they're driving impact um, traffic to their website or their app um, and using that to um, essentially build a plan that you can counteract um, from there. So um, that's what we covered today. Um, we do have um, a couple of stories that we wanted to share. Um, I don't know, I, I'm very happy to sort of sort of kick it off um, with a couple of our favorites. Um, so this is Daisy. Um, she's the brand marketing manager at Wonderbly. Um, and we've worked with her quite a bit in the past. And I wanted to share this great story of how she used competitive insights to make real actionable decisions. And they're essentially an e-commerce brand that sell um, personalized book, books across the global market. And they realized they were using similar web to track the competitors and they realized that they were lagging behind um, in the Dutch market and they didn't actually have the data to prove why that was happening apart from using the similar web country filter. So Owen mentioned that earlier about being able to see um, the competitive movements of the markets that you currently operate, but also in the ones that you don't play in um, and have access to different cuts across regions, across markets. And um, Daisy saw that there was um, a bit of a gap there. So she used similar web data and insights to actually um, gather her senior executive leadership team around this Dutch day um, and really tear down all the competitors in that region um, and then using that one day, that strategic day to rally the troops, so to say, speak. Um, and it was just a great way of her using the similar web data to act as that catalyst to start those conversations and then take action from it. Yeah, great one. Um... The next up is um, Sharan from eToro. He, he's used similar web for, for many years, and, and he's actually able to justify the ad spend that they allocate to any of the, the publishing partners um, that, they, that they use. And they use similar web to basically track the traffic of those partners um, on a regular basis so that if there's any upticks or downward trends in those traffic of those publishing partners, then he's able to negotiate better deals on behalf of eToro. Uh, likewise, he, he can also track the publishers that their competitors are using um, or whether they're, especially for, for newer markets, again, using the example that we just used, if you're, if you're going into a new, a new geography um, before you launch there, it can really give you a feel for, for, for the audiences that are already engaged around similar brands, giving you that leg up before you actually go in with your full sort of launch strategy um, in, a, in a new marketplace, in a new geography. Um, it's also worth noting that, that many of the channel specific teams at eToro use similar web um, from Charan's media buying team through to the SEO team, to the PPC team um, and the affiliate teams too. So um, they've really got a widespread of, of, um, of users making the most of similar web. And then finally, the last uh, customer story that we've got here is MGM, MGM Resorts. Um, and um, Stephanie here has been using, again, been using similar for a very long time. They use it to, to help track competitors across all their channels. But specifically, they use it for finding, qualifying and establishing return on investment for their affiliate partnerships and media campaigns. Um, they, they love to use it to discover new partner opportunities through tracking specific Las Vegas related keywords, or they'll be tracking the activity of their direct competitors to see if they're receiving any new traffic from, from new partners, um, or just keeping their eyes open at a, at a wider industry level um, around the, the, the hotel market or the gaming market. So then they can go and evaluate the potential of those affiliates um, based on, their, on, on MGM Resorts specific selection criteria um, for partners. Basically, uh, a nice little couple of numbers here. In their first year with SimilarWeb, they were actually able to close nine new partnerships, generating a 10% increase in revenue. Um, so a big success for them and, and obviously a big success for us as well. Yeah, great results. Um, so we've got a bit of a goodie bag here, a virtual one. So um, a couple of the 
um, links to the success stories if you want to um, read a bit more, um, plus other um, tools, tips and guides um, all about um, getting the most out of your marketing strategy. And um, please do um, check these out afterwards. Um, but that almost brings us to an end of today's session. We're going to um, save some time, as we mentioned, um, for Q&A. So I'll stop sharing and hopefully we've got some good um, questions out there. Yes, uh, we have a few coming in. Um, please feel free to ask more questions uh, while we're here. I'm going to start with uh, some of the ones with the most upvotes. So we have one from Nagesh uh, who asks, in case I'm not aware of who my competitor is, um, in that case, if I provide information on products or services, can we get who is the market leader for those mentioned products and services? Um, yes, yeah, so I think there's a couple of different ways that um, you can do this using similar web um, is um, through um, some of our keyword analysis tools, for example. So we have um, search interest analysis. So um, when you're talking about mentions um, and understanding the amount of traffic share, um, that's a great way to see who those market leaders are um, capturing share of voice around that specific product trend topic or search term. Um, so that's a great way. And then we also have um, uh, similar sites as well. So um, a great way to see um, what are the similar direct competitors to you um, so that you can quickly magically pull that list of 60 other um, competitors that you just weren't aware of and then use that to sort of build that list and then refine it um, and again use um, some of our keyword analysis tools to be able to look at the share of voice of brand mentions or um, non-branded terms. I don't know if you want to add anything to that Owen? No I think you've nailed it. I think similar sites is a great one that's a, that's a really good tool for that um, and again you know any keywords that you um, you put into the system like Chloe is saying you'll very quickly be able to see who the the sort of the industry leader is that's um that's sort of um getting the most organic traffic from that keyword there's so many different things you can do you, you could probably get all of this information actually from um our free tools um as well you know you'd be you'd probably be able to to tap into that put in your own website put in a a, a competitor you do know's website and you'll get um you'll get a top five at the very least um of, of those people that you're competing with so yeah give it a go excellent um moving on to the next question this one has five upvotes uh so how often should you be checking across marketing channels for trends or shifts in competitive activity yeah very good question um i mean th things can change pretty quickly um so it, depending on, um, yeah, fix it pretty quickly, no matter which market you, you operate in. So uh, for monitoring ongoing channel tactics or competitors, I, I would definitely be checking on a weekly basis um, at, at the very least, daily basis at, at the most, um, if your analysis platform can give you that sort of granularity. Um, SimilarWeb can show daily, weekly, and monthly channel trends. So you, you can get a near real-time view of, of competitor activity across all those major uh, digital marketing channels. Or, or you can go back and analyze over, over a, a 36-month historical period, should you wish. Um, ha, ha, as it's worth pointing out, I guess, having that historical data makes it much easier uh, for those users who need to provide regular reporting. So if you think there's plenty of people out there that have got to do month on month, quarter on quarter, year on year analysis, I'm, I'm one of them. I've got to do that, as I'm sure many people on the call are. Um, perhaps even for, for tailored um, period over period um, uh, sections of time, perhaps during a, a campaign period, for example, that's not a finite month. That could be over um, a, a strange period of time, and um, depending on, on on how long it runs for. So it's it's a regular request. Um, we're here. Luckily, it's it's very much possible within um, some of the features that we showed you today, like the marketing channels feature that we offer. Okay, excellent. Sounds good. Um, 
And the next question we have is, uh, what would you say is the most important step of competitive analysis and why? Um, the, yeah, that's a really good question. I guess um, we went through a couple of those key steps um, today from um, really building out that competitive strategy and mapping out your competitors and getting that 30,000 foot view. Um, and then you want to do that SWOT analysis as well, where it's the head to head and deep dive into each of the marketing channel mix. But um, I think the most important step here is um, to evaluate when you're doing this competitive analysis for your own key strands, your own weaknesses, really relative to your competitors so you can um, spot those gaps. So it's having that macro view so you can contextualize um, how you're performing against the wider market and then those key direct rivals that you've always got an eye on. Um, I think the thing is, is like, you, you really need to have that hard data to back up your recommendations so you can make the right call. Um, so if you don't really have the data to understand what's happening across your competitive landscape, um, you're really quite left in the dark, um, not having that and, and being, ha being able to make those confident decisions. Um, so just being able to interpret and synthesize that data is really critical. Great answer. Okay. Um, let me just check the questions. Um, we have one question from Nancy asking, is there any options for smaller startup businesses as the prices are quite high for the full system? Um, yeah, there are. I mean, we, we offer um, sort of account managed packages, which are sort of more enterprise level premium packages. And then we also have self-serve packages as well, which you can find all the information about on the pricing page on our website. They go from uh, an essential package, which sort of gives um, the full breadth of, of features that you can use with SimilarWeb um, to the the, um, the there's a few sort of data limitations to some of the stuff like you can only go back sort of three to six months um, but there's there's other packages you can get that, that suit your budget as well um, and uh, yeah, I mean if you've got any questions there's plenty of ways of asking on those uh, pricing pages to, to get some support too. Okay excellent. Um, the next question is quite interesting as well from Mary. Uh, so how should the strategy shift for smaller businesses if you're getting less than 5,000 web hits per month? Is there a change in strategy at all? Or do you recommend keeping it the same as if you were a larger traffic website? I, I think the, it, you can look at, the, like we used with the Lululemon and Gymshark example, they they were they were looking at, at, at our, our analogy is that they're they looking at each other because they have a close affinity with each other um like for a smaller business that gets under 500 web hits you're not going to be looking at like the nikes or the adidas of this world so perhaps if you want to look at uh, um slightly larger businesses than yourselves but you know they're still that they're, they're still important for you to see what they're doing they, th what they're doing might be more achievable for you, um, like for you to sort of think about tactically what you can employ across different channels. Um, looking at the big ones might be a little bit too far off, they because just because the budgets that are involved there and, and the you know the amount that goes into their different marketing campaigns is is atmospheric. It's 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 another level um, on a different planet. But yeah, I think like fi finding an affinity with with some brands or some businesses that that you do want to sort of aspire to get to, that that's more realistic. And um, certainly, you know, you'll be able to 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 find a lot of information about those sites. And um, hopefully, in that we'll have that information in in some of the free services that we can offer as well. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Is being able to um, scale it up because obviously the idea is to grow more web traffic to your website. So even if you're just starting out, having um, the the steps for competitive analysis from the get go is a great way to just really think about um, how you can emulate some of those strategies that are used by the bigger brands and also just for you to be able to see what's working for them 
um, and how you can um, position your your offering differently to what um, other audiences are grabbing to gravitating to within um, your market or within a market that you don't currently play. It, it's worth noting as well. We did the poll and a lot of you guys were saying that you're using organic social and you're using SEO techniques to, to really drive a lot of your, your current traffic. So you know, that's if that's the, the, the strategy you're using, look at the best practices that some companies are using um, in your area, in your market with non-branded keywords. Look at the keyword difficulties of, of um, cert certain keywords that you want to optimize for. Where's their low hanging fruit that you can go after and start optimizing things around? Um, so if that's your play, if organic is your is your sort of biggest play to, to, to drive traffic, look at, at what some of those, again, what some of those players are doing in that specific channel. Um, and then consider maybe where those players aren't, haven't got much activity. So if they haven't got much activity going on um, across email or across um, paid, maybe there's an opportunity for you to dive into it. Obviously budget depending, but um, yeah, I take into account what, what others at that level are doing. Okay, that was a very uh, detailed and I think a, a very wise response. Um, well, thank you everyone for, for joining us. Uh, if you do have any additional questions for the SimilarWeb team, uh, feel free to get in touch on uh, the contact pages on the SimilarWeb website. And I'm sure someone will be back to you soon with uh, with some answers to all of your questions about the tool. Um, and I'd like to thank you both, Owen and Chloe, for joining us today and for presenting to us um, the presentation that you you have shared us today. And thank you all for joining us from uh, from where you're based. And we'll be looking forward to speaking to you very soon. Uh, please join us tomorrow. We do have four more sessions um, about social listening, about social media content not too late to sign up so if you haven't signed up already feel free to do so on the funnel marketing uh, event page so thank you very much and see you soon thanks everyone thanks, guys. thank you bye, bye. bye. bye.